Goliath is the signature roller coaster at La Ronde and one of the least talked about B&M hypers. Maybe that's because of how it isn't quite 20 stories tall, or maybe that's because of the park it's located at. Whatever the reason may be, I want to shed some much needed light on this attraction. Goliath is one of the better B&M hypers. Find out why in this review. Six Flags acquired La Ronde in 2001, and since then they've invested roughly $90 million into the park and the biggest investment of all came in 2006 with the Goliath, a Bolger Mabillard hypercoaster. While this ride didn't quite reach the 200 foot or 61 meter barrier, Goliath did open as the tallest and fastest roller coaster in Canada. Those records were both broken by Behemoth at Canada's Wonderland in 2008, but Goliath has remained the biggest coaster in the province of Quebec. This coaster stands 175 feet or 53 meters tall, and it dominates La Ronde's skyline. You can see this coaster's lift hill looming over much of the park. Very little of the main layout can be seen from within the park though, because it runs along the back parking lot. However, it makes quite the impression for those outside the park. Those in that back parking lot can get up close and personal with the Camelbacks. Then the Sea of Camelbacks is extremely visible from the Jacques Cartier Bridge and the St. Lawrence River. The latter is arguably the best place to take in views of the coaster in my opinion. This helps draw in prospective customers visiting Montreal. Now let's talk about this ride's paint scheme. It really is curious. The coaster features bright red track, yellow rails, and blue supports. What rides in the Six Flags chain also have that paint scheme? I'm almost certain this coaster was intended to be used for Superman. Six Flags has used this identical paint scheme multiple times before, always for a Superman coaster. Just a few years prior, LaRonde had installed a Batman the Ride clone with the usual colors and even a Bat logo. It was named Vampire at the time. I believe LaRonde was going to become an officially branded Six Flags park around 2009, which would have allowed the park to finally use the DC characters, but this never materialized. This has resulted in this B&M hyper keeping the ever so popular Goliath name. But I think it does work here because it's far and away the tallest coaster at this park. LaRon's Goliath was one of two Goliaths that Six Flags actually installed for the 2006 season, both being B&M Hypers. Six Flags over George's Goliath was the other one, and that one is often considered one of the premier B&M Hypers. While LaRon's Goliath can't quite match the intensity of the other, this one has a few similarities still. Both were among the last B&M Hypers to feature the nine car trains. Neither of mid-course brake runs, allowing the train to keep the pace start to finish. Both have hardly any trims, and both have a weird finale with an abrupt little hop into the final brake run. Goliath is easily the most popular ride at La Ronde, and it often has the longest line in the park. While it is capable of having a great throughput if it runs both trains, there are two issues there. First, this ride has a tendency to run just one train. Both my visits occurred on busy weekends, yet this coaster opened with just one train and only add the second one later in the day. And on quieter days, I've heard one train ops are quite common. Second, dispatch times are pretty slow. This is an issue for most rides at La Ronde. It's particularly jarring on Goliath because B&M hypers usually have some of the fastest dispatch times in the industry. The crew waits until the unload platform is nearly empty before opening the air gates, so the train often doesn't start loading until the prior one has nearly completed the course. The crew also doesn't check the restraints the fastest, but they are quite thorough. Stapling is very common on this one. Expect the crew to press down the restraints quite hard. That seems to be a park policy, not a thing with individual ride ops. Those restraints are the familiar B&M clamshells. I love these restraints. The seats and lap bars are comfortable and ergonomically shaped. Even if stapled, I have no trouble experiencing the airtime because your waist and upper body are quite free. And like all the B&M hypers in the Six Flags chain, these ones do not have the added seat belts. As for seat selection, I like the back row best. I think the airtime is a little more sustained up front, but it's a bit more forceful in the back. You also have a shorter wait time. The front row queue line extends the length of the station, and if it's full, you may have to wait an extra 8 to 10 trains. Once dispatched, you head right up the lift hill, and I absolutely love the views this coaster provides you get this gorgeous view of Montreal overlooking the St. Lawrence River. And these sight lines continue for the rest of the coaster as well, because it's placed on a thin strip of land running right alongside the water. 
the first drop is great, while it feels noticeably shorter than the other B&M hypers, you still get some great floater airtime if you're in the back rows. This drop still manages to hit a max angle of 70 degrees despite the shorter height. Even those up front will get a little lift too. I think the first pullout has some decent positive G's, but the rest of the coaster is devoid of positives. One of the biggest criticisms about Goliath is that it features a relatively basic layout. It's an out and back coaster with a series of camelbacks and bunny hills. Is it repetitive? Undoubtedly. But I don't mind one bit. If you can appreciate sustained floater airtime like me, you'll be a big fan of Goliath. Few coasters can match the quantity of floater airtime that Goliath can. You have a first drop, 8 camelbacks or bunny hills, and additional airtime on the turnaround and finale. That first drop is followed by 3 consecutive camelbacks. Up front, the first two deliver floater airtime that's decent in power and extremely sustained because you're levitated out of your seat for the entire hill. Towards the back, you get slightly stronger airtime, but it's not quite as sustained because you only come out of your seat for the drop. The third camelback is slightly stronger airtime for all. It's still sustained, but not quite as much as the prior two hills. Next is a turnaround that you won't find on any other B&Ms. It's a crow's nest maneuver similar to the one found on Six Flags Great Adventures Jersey Devil Coaster, and I really like this element. First, you get a nice combo of airtime and laterals going into it. Everyone gets popped out of their seat, more forcefully up front though. Then you're thrown sideways from the banking while airborne, which is a fun sensation with those clamshell harnesses. Second, the way the turn lingers high off the ground gives you a few extra seconds to take in that city skyline. Third, the resultant drop is quite good. You get a good head chopper the track into the element, and everyone then gets shot out of their seat. It's especially great in those back rows. It's not a sustained moment, but maybe the ride's single strongest burst of airtime as it tows the line between strong floater and weak ejector. You then have three straight bunny hills. The first one does have a trim break. You'll feel it slow the train a little bit, but it doesn't bother me because you still get plenty of airtime. All three of these hills give decent sustained floater airtime across the train. I particularly like the third one if you're in the back. The first two don't quite dive all the way down to the ground, so you get some extra airtime in the third when it does. Next are two banked bunny hills that are the most underrated elements on this ride. You get the same sustained floater airtime in the prior three hills, but the banking on the hills pair that airtime with some great laterals. It's a fun contrast between the graceful airtime lifting you up out of the seat and the laterals trying to fold you over the side of the train. I really wish B&M would use these types of hills more in their other coasters. The finale starts like a bunny hill, but instead of diving all the way down to the ground, you quickly dip down and up and immediately go back into those final breaks. The front gets their usual airtime into the element, but they get abruptly tossed upwards into the breaks afterwards. If you've ridden Six Flags over George's Goliath, the entry into the breaks in this one is mighty similar. The back doesn't get the same bang though. You only get moderate airtime over the first bunny hill, and then you slow down too quickly to get that airtime into the brakes. This ends the 4,039 foot, or 1,231 meter long coaster. While it is one of the shortest b and hypers in terms of length, it offers one of the most satisfying layouts because there's no shortage of airtime hills. There's no filler in this layout, and I'm perfectly fine with that. And I'm also glad to say this coaster is still extremely smooth. You won't find any rattle in this b and I could ride this coaster all day. So what would I rate Laurent's Goliath? I would give this mini hyper a 9 out of 10. This is a floater airtime machine. If you love that type of airtime, this is the ride for you. Every single hill will have you levitating out of your seat. And the abundance of airtime is paired with some sneaky laterals here and there, super smooth tracking, and sweet views. This is undoubtedly the star attraction at La Ronde, and I also think it's one of the best b and hypers. It's not quite in that top tier for me. The top ones offer airtime that's a bit more powerful, but it's in that next grouping. So those are my thoughts on Goliath at La Ronde. What are your thoughts on Quebec's tallest and fastest coaster? Do you think it's one of the better b and hypers? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.